Hello and welcome to Visualising Noise Control and today we're going to be looking at noise from fans. This is the first in the series of Visualising Noise Control and we're going to be looking at the design of fans and fan housings or starters and how that can impact on the overall noise from a fan. There are three primary sources of fan noise. First is broadband aerodynamic noise generated by turbulent airflow. The second are discrete tones at the blade passing frequency and the third is mechanical noise due to mounts, bearings and balances. So let's get started. So the first thing that we can do in order to alter the noise from a fan is actually just to simply increase the number of blades on the fan. By increasing the number of blades we can change what's known as the passing blade frequency. Passing blade frequency is calculated by knowing the RPM, the speed of the fan, and then multiplying that by the number of blades, and then simply dividing it by 60. By adding more blades, we change the frequency from a low frequency to a higher frequency. If we take blades off, the frequency goes down. We tend to find that if we add more blades and we get a higher frequency noise from the fan, then it's more readily controllable, or it's easier to control higher frequency noise because it tends to be easier to absorb it with, say, acoustically absorbed materials, and it tends not to have such an impact over significantly large distances. The next thing that we can do in order to control the fan is simply to slow the fan down. And the table indicates the likely reductions in noise level uh, depending on what percentage we reduce the speed of the fan. So, for example, a 30% reduction in speed would equate to approximately an 8 dB reduction in total noise level. So it stands to reason that the speed of the fan is a balancing equation uh, with the maximum amount of noise from the fan. If we look at optimised fan speed and performance, we can see that this would be presented on a graph. Where we have airflow along one axis, and static pressure along the other. The maximum efficiency point is somewhere along that curve, usually in the middle, where we're balancing between louder lower frequency noise and louder higher frequency noise, and we're also balancing between the fan being completely shut off and the maximum delivery of the fan. As the resistance of the system uh, gets lower, frequency goes up. As the resistance of the system gets higher, frequencies go down. The more the fan runs, the more low frequency noise it will produce, and the faster the fan runs, the more free, high frequency noise it will produce. Span feed is, speed is often dictated by the required airflow of the system and the volume of air or material that needs to be moved. So efficiency and noise are a balance. So before we move on to fans and fan blades, let's quickly have a look at centrifugal fans. We've got three primary types. We've got radial or paddle bladed fans. We've got backward curved fans, and then we've got forward curved fans. Radial or paddle blade systems are common with air and, and, par and par particles needed to be moved, such as coal dust or local extraction and ventilation in a woodworking shop. Backward curved blades can be shaped so that the blade is more aerodynamic, like an airplane wing, and thus reduces the noise. When we look at radial and paddle blades, they tend to be high speed, and that tends to also indicate high tonal noise. Backward curving blades can be high speed, but that also suggests that they have got a high maintenance and a high cost, but they tend to have lower noise. And as I've said previously, we can improve the efficiency uh, of the blade by improving the aerodynamics of the blade and hopefully control noise better. When we look at forward curving blades, these are quite good at moving large air quantities at lower speeds. They tend to have higher levels of noise and higher low frequency tones, but there is less bearing noise or less noise from the bearings associated with these. So let's now have a look at fan blades. So if we improve the blade aerodynamics, we improve efficiency. We've seen that with the circular fans that we looked at earlier and we can also reduce turbulence and that reduces the air noise. Things like dinks, notches, chips, uh, 
and duct on a bleed will reduce its efficiency and that tends to also have an impact on the overall noise level from the bleed. So if you're looking at an existing fan system, it's worth checking to see that the bleeds are in good condition. We're concerned here about ensuring that there's a good level of balance in the system and these things tend to affect balance and when things run out of balance, they have a tendency to make more noise. Later on, we're going to have a look at the starter design or the frame in which the fan is sitting. The uh, starter design of the frame guides and vanes can be as important as the blade design itself because if we think about it, there's air flowing across the fan blades and there is air also flowing across the starter blades or the starter vanes. So we have to consider that. So if we consider the aerodynamics of the starter guide vanes and their position, we can impact on the overall noise level from a fan. But let's now quickly have a look at the blades. There's a number of things that we can do to improve noise quality from a blade. One of them is to think about how we alter the airflow over the blade itself. We have airflow over a standard blade and this can cause eddy currents or non-laminar airflow as the air passes off the edge of the blade. By introducing channels, we help to speed the airflow over the, the suction side of a blade and so reduce the air turbulence and that can potentially reduce noise. So normal airflow results in eddies and the application of airflow accelerators direct the airflow and reduce eddies. Flip the fan onto its side now and have a look at its performance where it's coming into close proximity to the starter. This typical blade system will leave a slight gap at the top and be as close as possible towards the bottom. Bevel tip blades help to reduce interaction, which as we can see here on the right hand side, uh, between, so these will reduce interaction between the blade and the starter or the frame of the fan. By increasing the distance between the impeller and the frame at the outermost area of the fan while keeping it close at the innermost area, they can reduce intakes and outtake noise. Curved blade tips Similar to modern aircraft, wing tips can also reduce turbulence, such as you might see in wind turbine design. So tip design of any kind of blade, be it within a fan or a wind turbine, can impact on the overall noise from these types of systems. If we now move on to air as it passes off the trailing edge of a fan blade, we can, think, we can get something occur called a stall. Now, stall is an undesirable turbulence at the trailing edge of a blade. It's a mechanical, its mechanics are complex, but it tends to occur at low flow rates. Stall tends to be localised and so results in altering the blade angle of, of attack and the airflow is moved out of position. So unsteady blade forces are created, which result in noise. Every time we move away from smooth laminar airflow, we have a tendency to create noise. Anti-stall knobs, which you can see there in black on the right hand image, help to even the flow over the trailing edge of the blade. And this in turn reduces turbulence, and by reducing turbulence, we reduce noise. So that's the trailing edge of the blade, but what about the short edge of a blade? Well, the standard design is relatively straight, and that will have a tendency to create um, a single vortex off of the bottom edge of the blade. So the standard trailing edge design can allow for airflow from the suction side of the blade and the pressure side of the blade to mix to create a large vortex, which creates a more tonal noise. Notches allow for better air mixing. So if we put notches on the blade, as we can see in the lower image on the right, uh, which is a close up, and then you can see it in its full position on a blade in the bottom left hand image. So by introducing notches, this increases the number of frequencies at which the noise occurs, making the noise less tonal and so theoretically less annoying. However, it doesn't reduce the overall noise level. It just broadens the frequency over which it's created. You may often see this type of design used on fans where noise as a disturbing factor is a consideration. Again, this has started to be used on wind turbines and you'll also see it being used in small fans that we associate with computer systems. So let's now come back to the starter design. 
If we apply the same principles that we apply to the blade as we do to the starters, then we should be able to help control noise from these elements. Setting out starter gains means so that the distance varies from say 31 to 37 degrees on a small fan unit can help to reduce noise impulses because as the blades pass, the regularity of the positioning of the starter blades can have a tendency to create a pulsing noise. It is however too important to try to maintain symmetry in the starter system, particularly if the starter veins and the frame are close to the blade, because we can also create noise problems by not having a symmetrical system. So employing the same notching that can be used on the blades that we spoke about previously can also be employed in the starters to help spread noise over a wider frequency. So again, not specifically reducing noise, but reducing the annoyance factor of the noise. If we now flip the starter design on its side and we cut a section through it, then it's important as to how the air is entering in towards the fan. So designing the frame around the fan so that the air can flow evenly helps to reduce intake noise. Symmetry and even surfaces are key. The bell mouth design, which is the, the section in the middle, is similar, um, similar to the one that you'll see on most fan systems. Using this, it's been shown to have a significant ability to reduce noise uh, levels from fan systems. A poor design would be one where there's square edges and there's a lack of symmetry. An alternative to the bell entrance or bell mouth entrance would be to introduce notched or step design, as this can also help widen the frequency of the air intake of the noise from the fan mouth. So we've looked at blades and we looked at the starters and the, the, the frame in which holds the blades. So now let's quickly have a look at the bearing options that we can do. So there are significant options with regards to bearing and ensuring that bearings are running free, clear of any dirt or grit, and that where necessary, they're well lubricated, will impact on an overall noise from any fan system. So the maintenance of a bearing is paramount in order to control bearing noise. The main activity that we're trying to perform here is to balance the bearing. Unbalanced systems are a key reason for noise and bearings are a common cause of this problem because as the bearing becomes weird, it starts to move out of its normal balance. So we have three main types that we're going to consider in this presentation. One is sleeves and rifle bearings, the second is ball bearing systems, and the third are magnetic bearings. Sleeve bearings tend to be the most simple one. Uh, as you can see here on the left hand side, we have a section through a sleeves bearing. It's in a horizontal position, but these bearings tend to be mounted vertically. Uh, that's because they need to be mounted vertically in order to be able to work properly. So they can be quieter at low speeds when first fitted, but they tend to get noisier. So they're less durable, but they have an initial cheap cost. So the initial limited outlay that you have using a sleeve bearing is soon borne out by the fact that it becomes noisier. The next step up from a sleeve bearing is essentially the sleeve bearing, but with a rifle pattern on the inside of it. So it's been rifled in the same way the barrel of a gun or a rifle would be rifled. The good thing about sleeved bearings with a rifling or a rifled bearing is that they can be set horizontally. The rifling or the pattern that's been engraved on the inside of the, the tube in which the main bearing element sits in is that it helps to pump the oil round about the bearing and help that helps in turn to make the bearing last for longer. The next option is a bald bearing system. These are the metal ball bearings that you're probably familiar with. And what we have is a central ring and an outer ring. And between those, there are a set of round metal balls which are held in position by a chain system. So though generally more expensive, ball bearing fans do not suffer from the same orientation limitations as sleeve bearings. So they can go vertically, horizontally, or any other direction you like. And they're more durable, especially at higher temperatures and they're quieter than sleeve bearings at higher rotational speeds. The lifespan of a ball bearing fan may be around uh, 36,000 hours at a 50 degrees temperature. The last bearing system that we're going to look at are magnetic bearings. Now, the magnet is set in a magnetic bearing in order to repel the bearing so that it levitates away from either the fan system or the motor. 
This aids in the stability uh, of the fan and the bearing and so helps reduce wear and tear on the bearing itself. The bearing is often a combination of traditional bearing technology and magnets. And in this instance here, the magnet is placed at the bottom in order to help centre the bearing as the fan spins. This technology is all about controlling wear and tear and stopping the fan from going out of balance and may have an impact on the creation of noise. That's the very basics of fan design. Uh, the purpose of this is not to allow you to go out and design fans, but more to allow you to be able to identify what, what a good fan looks like and what a poor one would look like. And also to be informed when asking for information about a fan system and to be able to make judgment calls as to how uh, good they're likely to be at controlling noise. Thanks for watching.